Hey, what's up, peeps? Y lo mío, sit down and take a seat. Que lo que, siéntate. Lawrence and beyond, Trump is gone. What's good? Let's start the show. And today, we got my Jean Ben hosting. Go, like always. And we got Wani from you, Wonder. What is good? Hi. How's it going? Yeah, I'm going to turn down the energy. I'm sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> Don't worry. I appreciate it. <laughs> like, what, what, what brings you here today? So, I am here promoting you, Wander. We are finally our own entity. Yeah. So, for the last five years, we've been a program of a nonprofit. Yeah. And I finally was able to become my own company. So, now we are You Wander Inc. And we have a event coming up. It's called a business shower. So I'm excited to promote that here tonight. And for this <laughs> event and business shower, I'm, I'm sorry, I get distracted. What is a business shower? So a business shower borrows the idea of a baby shower, but instead of celebrating a new baby, you're celebrating a new business. So the idea is that we're not just coming together as a community to just celebrate females for having babies but yeah. also that we're celebrating females for starting new businesses new collaborations yeah. that were more than just you know bringing babies into the world and, and it's and it's interesting because you know the, the baby shower is a celebration and you said new business but i'm pretty sure you wonder has been around for a while so why i say it's new business is because before we were part of a nonprofit, okay. and now we're becoming a S corporation so we are an official small business uh, and our whole vibe is changing we redid our branding our colors our logo we have a new website yeah. everything is new and we're adding more to the vision I see so it's not old and it's not like how we used to be anymore. and um just to clear the little bit of smoke that might be in the air where somebody <laughs> you know what I mean um, most people take as going corporate wrong in, in non-profit you know non-profit is like yay non-profit you're doing it for us <laughs> you know that there's the corporate decision <laughs> you know explain 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 a little bit of that the confusion yeah so we struggled a lot with this idea yeah. sim because of what you said right non-profit is is celebrated in our communities black and brown people always start non-profits yeah. because businesses are usually looked down on and i think we're pushed towards that but the click for us, the switch, was I was raising thousands of dollars and still not making enough money to pay myself and my family. Because we were selling our services so low that we had to make up the difference by fundraising money. So the switch is happening now where it's like, brown and black people are worth it, right? And the services that we're providing to each other because we know each other yeah. is, is valuable and the only way that we are going to be valued is if we set that price right yeah, and the only way exactly the only way we're going to be sustainable is if we continue to if we stop actually not continue if we stop under performing under selling ourselves yeah. right like you ever heard the term you know your friends always asking you for a discount Right, yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's okay to give your friends and family the discount. But how right? you gotta eat, like? But you gotta eat too, <laughs> yeah, right? You know? So we made that switch, and you know what? You wander went through a strategic planning process. So two years ago, we hired consultants to come in. They interviewed everyone that we were involved in. They did a full report on what their recommendations were for us. Yeah. And when I looked at the plan after, I think it was like five months, the process. I was so uninspired by that plan. It, it was daunting. Um, overwhelming. Because yeah. everything I had to do was basically beg white people to fund my dream. And I w I'm done asking, you know, white people to give me money to fund my dreams, right? Yeah. I'm done parading poor brown and black kids so that people feel guilty and give us money. Like, I just, that's not something I'm cool with anymore. And working in the nonprofit world as an individual like that was my profession i i taught and i was a teacher i was a program of a nonprofit. i was program director of several nonprofits. like i've been in nonprofits for the last seven years and i 
I'm exhausted. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm exhausted and it's just taking and taking and taking and you want are still doing all the great work that we're doing. We're still serving the same kids in the Dominican Republic, yeah. but we are changing the model. Okay. We're changing the infrastructure so that we can become sustainable, so that we can pay people and stop asking people to volunteer and yeah. never pay them. Like I, I want to be able to have jobs for people. I want to be able to pay them the salaries they deserve. I want to be able to create a culture within my company where people feel seen yeah. you know like i've never worked in a place that i feel like i matter yeah. you know and and i've worked in corporate and i've worked in nonprofits, and it's hard to create that but it's our responsibility to kind of change that and i'm hoping that you wander become that yeah i have, I have hopes for that and um I, I know how the the how should i say the nonprofit world it's like, yeah, you feel like a person, but it's it's too it's too it, it, it's sometimes not all of it, not all of it, but some of the nonprofit world, like you're like let's say your situation, it just seemed like it was like you were doing the right thing, everything was working, but Jesus Christ, it was just it was just like it was draining. It, it was draining. It's like one drip of blood every single time. You know, it's like it's like the you, you there's only a certain amount of times you can walk before you know you you're, you're out of energy and stuff like that. And with that being said, the corporate world is that almost exact opposite. To the point that you just feel like a number. So, with that being said, how do you how, how do you feel like how are you gonna like like n be in the middle? How are you gonna like make that corporate if your your corporate environment still welcoming as a nonprofit, but now with the with the with the pro team? Yeah, you know what I mean. So, I truly believe that things that are made by us for us work, right? And I also don't envision you wander ever being like a global you know, multi-billion dollar you jinxed like, it. monster. You jinxed well, it. I was going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's important to have that vision yeah, because yeah. you can start a business and be the next Google and be, you know, Amazon, or you can start a, a business and be Silverio Insurance in Lawrence or Salvatore's, you know, like Holding you can, it down. right? Like, you can still be successful and, and it doesn't have to be at the back on the backs of your community. And I think that that's what's important is that we're family run. We are socially conscious and that's at the core of our values you know family honesty family run explain to me who like is your mother doing the paperwork yeah. <laughs> is your so, brother's like trying to do <laughs> so yeah it, it, it's family run so yeah. we have um folks here in the u.s and then we have folks in the dominican republic so all of you want what the mission of you wander for those of you that maybe don't know. No, let's that's, that's, that's start it. <laughs> no, uh, so the mission of you wander is to inspire inclusive travel and wellness for all walks of life, and the important part of that is inspire inclusive, right? Like we're inspiring inclusivity, and the way we do that is by bringing people into our family. Yeah. And what does that mean? And what are those values that we're carrying into those experiences that we're providing for people? So uh, I have my cousin, <laughs> Carla Sanchez, who is... Yo, Carlota? Carla? <laughs> no, 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 not Carla. Like, like. <laughs> what about the other Carla? Yes. The boat Carla? The other Carla. Do you used to weld? She's the working to put weld no, plastic? No, 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 she's from New York. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> it's all good. Um, so she is my creative consultant and producer. So she's the one behind the event that we're having on Thursday, the brains behind our uh, branding strategy and like how do we put that together. Then I have my sister, Maya, <laughs> who does all our social media. She's a marketing and research uh, intern. She's a college student. She's helping keep me hip, you know, because we need that. <laughs> I, I don't like to admit it, but I am getting older <laughs> and times are changing. So I got to stay hip. She keeps me hip. <laughs> if you want to keep my GB hip, you <laughs> let me know. I need that. <laughs> And then I have my mom and my dad who do all of the logistics in the Dominican Republic along with my mom's family. So yeah. the great part about you wander, the reason why people should travel with us and people should do their wellness uh, with us is because we have the assets in place in the Dominican Republic to give you that experience. So our family owns a finca with over 200 acres we have invested in the property for the last three years. I thought I was big shit. My dad had like eight <laughs> acres. 
<laughs> yeah, my my grandfather was a yo. God bless yo. I think it's behind you. I mean, like, it makes you happy. You know, yeah, like, God I know. Bless. It, I mean, not all of it is um, producing. You know, like, but the parts that we use, there's pool, there's jacuzzi, there's three houses, there's gazebos. So, so the whole family that went into this, like, you know how rare that is. Yeah. Yo. And then my dad's part of the family got together, uh, the brothers and my grandmother, so there's five of them, and they got together, put all their money together, and they built a five-story building with four apartments. So that's where we stay when we go to the Dominican Republic through the program. So we have a cost advantage because of that. We're able to you know, provide people with prices that are reasonable, yeah. but also giving them an experience that's safe. Uh, but also fun. Y que ellos están en familia. Ellos están yeah. cómodos. Ellos no tienen que preocuparse por nada. Yeah. We literally, they, we pick them up at the airport and they don't got to think about anything. Yeah. It's like, take the wheel. <laughs> anything. Like, they're being driven everywhere. They're being fed. And it's yeah. all local. Like, I live in un barrio que se llama Manganagua en Santo Domingo. Yeah. Super, like, it's like five streets each way that's the barrio you know yeah, that's it, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, Todo yeah, mundo yeah. Se conoce. everybody been living there nobody moves that's it it's i like the ones that enough. nobody knows about those are the best places <laughs> in the year i'm sorry so that experience is very unique yeah. you know and, and folks that have gone with us in the past even though they were just doing service trips, it, it was completely life-changing for them. And a lot of what they expressed is, wow, we do yoga, we do meditation, we have a rooftop where we like to do our meetings every morning. Like, it's very serene. Yo, it's, it's very, very beautiful. How do you not <laughs> stop from smiling? I'll be like, like this is, <laughs> you know. Um, I got a, I'm sorry to interrupt you, what you were about to say, but I got a question. This gave me, the, like, so, you want, I mean, this is probably not you on this business, or I'm not sure if it is, but that sounds so bliss. How do you acclimate them to come back to this? You know I mean? like, so there's an entire program that goes into it. So when you sign up for a program and you wonder whether you're a nonprofit, a, a small business, or an individual, it's not just a one-time thing. So you're not just booking a vacation. Okay, it's okay. a program. So we're talking about what it means to be black and brown. We're talking about, okay, what are the privileges that you have in this American life, right? And how do you live without that for a week or for four days or for however long you're gonna be in DR. And in DR, we having, we're having those conversations as well, right? We're talking about bias. We're talking about how do we, what do we wanna bring back from your trip in DR to your life in the US? Because the whole point is to, to step outside of yourself yeah. so that you can get to know yourself, right? And I think sometimes we forget that. Like, we're so go, 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 go. We were talking about this off air. You know, like, yeah. it's hard to disconnect from the cell phone. It's hard to disconnect from the family, the friends, the responsibilities, yeah. el trabajo. Now in a pandemic, right? Like, think about that. How much our life has changed. Are we processing that? Are people going to be ready to to travel when it's time to to yeah. do that right like how do we help people along during all of that yeah that's 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 dope everyone <laughs> like oh. wow i drew another blank <laughs> 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 but yeah. like, this is all good but like what was what i being said like you wonder right <laughs> this thursday you're having an event at what time <laughs> I'm gonna make sure this episode comes out at least Wednesday the latest, guys. You can hold me down. <laughs> <laughs> the least. It's probably gonna be Tuesday. But um, the, 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 the business shower? Was that what you called it? Yeah. Yeah, the, the business shower. Because, yo, we just say, yeah, hey, this business shower is boom. But um, it's on Thursday. Yeah, so the business shower is on Thursday. It's at 7 p.m., yeah. it's gonna be on Zoom. We are, you have to RSVP. If you go to at you wonder Inc. or at Ronnie Munoz on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, anything, we're on there. You click the link in our bio and you can RSVP. We're also, so much like a baby shower, you know, people usually register at like a Target or they register, like, so you can bring gifts. So yeah. we're also doing that. There is a website, it's called shineregistry.com. 
and they specifically help female founders fund their entrepreneurial dreams. So we registered, and if you go to shineregistry.com and you look up you wander, you can send us a gift. So even if you can't make it, you can still, you know, give a some. There's like three buckets. So the little things are things you don't that don't require money. That's like liking us on Facebook, yeah. um, looking us up on LinkedIn, and you know, that feels nice. follow us. Yeah, that feels like, nice. It doesn't. Yeah. Co- you don't. To support someone, you don't need money. Yeah. And I think I love saying that to people. You can share our stuff. You can ask, tell someone about it. You can invite your friends to it. It doesn't necessarily have to be, oh, I have to donate. It's interesting because these days, support, support is like, I need money. I need God damn, I'm trying to piss off somebody. But it's like, it's basically, <laughs> when I say, when I hear the word support, support, I hear money, money, money. Oh, crap. I, I mean, I, we are raising money yeah. for it. So I am investing my own savings into the company but to start the company uh in january to launch i need fifteen thousand nine hundred dollars so i'm raising i'm trying to raise ten thousand dollars and i want to get into that but (laughs) i'm sorry that that i made you go into that (laughs) but I, i but what i meant is that it feels good that you're offering them an option that is, they don't have to pay. Because when you hear the word support, some people think pay, pay, pay. But you say, no, you don't have to pay us nothing. I, you're like, do you know that guilt that you feel that we hooked you up and you want to support us? This is all you have to do, no money. And it's like, <sighs> yeah, so RSVP is free. Like, <laughs> we're going to have performances. Yeah. We're going to have raffles. Like, there's gonna be a ton of stuff happening yeah. at the event. It's free to go. You know, invite a friend, yeah. show your support that way, share our lives when we go live. All of those things are helpful. Yeah. Uh, yes, we're raising $10,000 so that I can launch in January. Uh, but to me, it's, it's not about the money. It's about community. Like, there's nothing I've accomplished in my life that has been done without my community. So when people are like, oh my God, Wani, you've done so much. Like, I admire yeah, so you. I in my mind, I'm like, well, I didn't do it by myself. Right, like, thank you. I appreciate that, yeah, and I'm humbled it, by it. But you have a castle, but a I, family. You have a art. Yo, yo, that's nasty. Yo, too bad. Yo, I have a whole <laughs> tribe. Behind yeah, me, you know, like yeah. people that believe in me, that trust me, that love me. But it also comes with with a huge responsibility. And you know what I respect the most that you, you wonder has been out there for years, and and I think I mean this is the first time. Like, um, and you're still telling them you don't have to pay nothing. But we are raising something. Like, that, that means you guys want to go harder. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 it'll be hard for somebody not to donate. You know what I mean? So it's like, I, I really respect that a lot. Thank you. And, you know, at the end of the day, I want people to walk away from the event feeling empowered, inspired. I want them to feel joy. Yeah. Right? Like, we have Via Javier is going to perform. Yeah. Uh, Keovani. We have Chavi and Johan, Johandi, like they're doing a bachata duo mix. Like it's gonna be dope. They they, they sing bachata. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 like, I'm, I'm trying to hang be... out with people like that to see if I have like a little talent. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. No, it's all good. So it's gonna be dope. We've been working really hard behind the scenes. I have a team that has been helping me. Nelson Mata has been behind the scenes. Carla Sanchez, yeah. Maya Munoz. Like, these people have been so helpful all throughout. I'm so grateful. Like, none of this was me alone. Yo, Nil is, like, the best infamous helper. Yes. <laughs> Yo, it's like, Naya, it's like, it's like, he does, he probably doesn't say this, but he, he just rather be like, I don't, I'm not, I don't, got, I, fuck the fame, no, no, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing this, I don't give a fuck about that other fame shit, but I'm, I'm helping, I'm doing this, such if I'm needed credits, whatever the fuck it is, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, like, yo, I mean, shout so, out to Nail, nigga. Shout out to Nail, I yeah. think he definitely is an artist, he is someone who cares about Lawrence a lot, and he's always down to support yeah. in any way possible. Super and Dominican as fuck. You wouldn't know that by looking at him. Oh, you, yeah, yeah, You yeah. think it's like, oh, he's just, you know, acclimated to, he's one of these Spanish people acclimated to this. Like, now you talk to that nigga, it's like, yo, yo, raza. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, yes, I, I respect that. Yeah, I mean, raza, nigga. <laughs> and, um, Wani. Bien serio. Bien serio. Where can I get a melanin shirt? Oh. Uh, unless it's only for the ladies. <laughs> no, so, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you guys should definitely look them up. They do all types. It's kind of like the God is Dope folks. Like they do a bunch of 
melanin merch. I so see, they have yeah. hoodies, they have shirts, they have a whole bunch of things. So you guys can just look them up. I'm right. sure if you Google like melanin t-shirts on, it'll word, pop up. Word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love this shirt, you know, all the shades, the especially facts. with, you know, Joe Biden. I think you're the last one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yo, you sound like my man right now. <laughs> He actually got me this shirt. I was like, I want one. Shout out to you. Shit. I cannot believe it. I am not this one. All right. And uh, and Wani, a personal question, and and like you know, doing having your own business, evolving it to this, and having your family literally backing into it, and having a relationship. How do, how how do you, how do you how do you cope with that? Because like busy people. And relationships, it's, it's, it's a challenge. It, it's it, it, so so. What my question is like, what's your advice? <laughs> what's, what's the, you know? <laughs> you keep it going. What's, you know, I just I just curious. So I think, I think, as a human, you have to learn who you are, like really really well, to be able to understand how you function when you're in a relationship, and. My par- I'm very fortunate. My partner is also very busy, right? Like, uh, diversity director uh, out of school. Oh, that's like, like coaching three sports. Like, yeah, you know, has a ton of responsibilities. So I think that when people want to make it work, they're gonna do it. You know, and it's not easy. Yeah. It takes a lot of work, a lot of tears, a lot of communication, yeah. a lot of vulnerability. It takes a lot of self-reflection because when you're with someone regardless whether it's your friend your best friend or a partner that you have you know it takes two people and it also takes like you have to put in work you know you have to put in work like if you don't that shit's gonna break apart and that happens with anyone you know like think about not talking to your parents for three months like where's that relationship you know what i mean like Think about not caring about, you know, your best friend's feelings and they're always there for you, you know. So I, I have yeah, yeah. I have a hard time spreading out my time, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and I'm very grateful that my friends and my family are, are understanding of the type of person that I am. Yeah. Um, but also I hope that they feel like I'm also understanding of who they are yeah. and that I am there when it counts. You know, so like I'm not always there. You know, I have a lot of friends that have their kids and their families, and I love those girls. And sometimes, like I can't make it to the birthday party, right? Because I'm like wish doing you could something. Yourself in three yeah. Days. And I just had another. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like the cool aunt that like sends a gift. You know, because it can't be that. And if I feel bad about that, but not because they make me feel bad, because they understand. And like that's, I can't ask for anything more than that. So, uh, as far as advice, I just think we got to... Really know yourself, you know yeah. what I mean? Get in there and just like, even though it's... Even though we prefer the superficial thing to say, you really have to know that when you're in this position, you're, you're not... You, it's just... It brings the worst out of you. And you, you got to let go of the ego. That's a big thing. I have a pretty heavy ego, like, you know, like Beyonce song ego, you know? <laughs> So, I really have had to learn to step outside of myself and understand that, like, it's not always about me. True. And that's that's a hard pill to swallow yeah. Yeah. when you're active, you know? Like, today I'm here, you know, and tomorrow I'm, like, doing this. And people are like, how do you do so much? And how and this and that. Yo, I, I feel you. You know, one of my biggest struggles, like, like I could be pretty, um... How should I say? Specific about what a word means. So sometimes, hearing the word ego, I'm like, oh, nah, I don't, I don't got that ego. What are you talking about? But you say what you said. I'm like, fuck, something that I keep working on. And I'm still working on today. One thing, guys, I'm going to tell you my weaknesses right now. I have an issue. I interrupt people. That is my superpower. Good thing and, you're the host. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just works. I'm like, how can I make this, 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 this fucking vessel work for me right now? Because right now it's just... <laughs> It's only certain spots that's not allowed. But with that being said, it's like one thing that that I really notice is um not making everything about yourself. Yo, I would do that without even noticing. Mm-hmm. It, it was just a habit. It'll be like oh, and somebody could be like oh, look at this cup. You know, it had this crack there. I'm like yo, I remember when I had a cup and it cracked that way. I'm like yo, right? You just took it to the other. Like, we just spent 20 minutes out of, out of my sentence, and I can't imagine if a person that really wanted to express something, how would they felt 
after somebody else doing that. I'm the same way. So, so like, yo, so that's I'm like, I'm like, yo, so yo, I, yo, that's what I say, yo, I feel you. And with that being said, that that must be e like a certain type of egoism or whatever. But yeah, I feel, I feel you on that, you know. And I'm, I'm working on that as well. You know what I mean? Like just like trying to work on that. And, and I'm, and honestly. My life has been a little bit colorful, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean I'm just, just trying to, you have a lot of experiences to share, we yeah. understand. <laughs> you, know. you know, I get, totally get it. I'm fun to be around. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't know what I share. Shit, and um, Wani, um, for you wander, and after this, uh, the, the event you're planning to have this Thursday, even after the event, how, how do you think um, we could further help you? Yeah, so we have our website up, right? Like sharing the website, going on there, um, telling your employer about our wellness services. So we offer three different things. We offer diversity and inclusion workshops yeah. uh, for and webinars. We offer travel tours. So those are the trips to the Dominican Republic. Uh, those tours specifically are around language, cultural immersion, uh, and service. And would you, let's say if um, I've, uh, I have two generations of, um, what are you, um, let's say I'm a second generation Irish in America and this, I really just want to, I really want to want, 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 like maybe educate myself or go into, or I have that experience. I, 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 can, can, I, can I go? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> white people are allowed. All right, white people are allowed, boys. We good, we good, we good. I just try to put that, you know, the nicest way I can. <laughs> I don't know. So, it, inclusivity means everyone, right? Like, we yes. want people to feel a sense of belonging, right? And how do we do that? We have to bring it all together. Yeah, yeah, let us rock. <laughs> 70 degree weather, November, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, inclusivity is about everyone. We yeah. want everyone to feel a sense of belonging. And how do we do that but to bring people together? So, we offer our wellness services as well to companies, to nonprofits, so that it's not just, oh, I want to go and help kids in the Dominican Republic or I want to go on a yoga retreat. It's also, I'm working overtime right now because of the pandemic so let's talk about the pandemic right because this to me this is like everything is changing because of this so because of because of the pandemic we're not doing travel tours for the first nine months once we launch in january so if we're looking into the future a little bit uh we really had to think about how do we launch a travel and wellness company without traveling so we're doing virtual wellness okay. why virtual wellness so there's Deloitte, PwC, like all these huge companies, Cisco, have done all these surveys of employees that have been working through the pandemic, and they found that 36% of their employees will still be working remote the majority of the time in January of 2022. So there are going to be people working from home, living at home, and taking care of the kids at home, and being on call basically 24-7 yeah. for the next two years. Right, so you wander is really a solution to that where we're meeting people where they are so that employers are able to give their employees that work-life balance that they need. So for the first nine months, once we launch in January, we're offering virtual wellness, which is our third bucket yeah. of our services. And I say this because we don't really think about wellness virtually, right? Yeah. Like, like, I, like, I wonder what it is. Wellness is like going to the gym, you know, yeah. taking a yoga class, traveling to some place and being at a spa, right? So what we're doing is I actually have my first employees already living in DR. She's an American citizen, but she's living in DR for the first year. She's enjoying that. She is loving it. <laughs> she's like, um, I'm ready to work already. <laughs> Let's go. I'm happy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, she had been with the program for two years. She was a program manager last year. And when I told her I was starting my own company, like, she I wish I was working with y'all. Super excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still have to pay her. <laughs> That's why I'm raising this money. <laughs> um, but she is going to be in charge of getting wellness professionals from the Dominican Republic. So even though people are not traveling to DR, they're getting that Dominican flavor, culture, that, that vibe, culture, that, speech, that, that vibe. Noise that Spanish speaking, yeah. like, let's do this, let's get you out of your comfort zone, uh, wellness experience. 
so I'm excited. We have a lot to offer uh, in the next, you know, year yeah. and beyond. This hopefully, this yeah. This is this, this is huge. Big. I have an employee. I have this interns. Is big, I, have... Bro, I can't wait to say that. I'm an employee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. You know what I mean? Like, shit. That's what's up, man. It's it, it it's uh, surreal. It's surreal, but I'm so grateful and and humbled and honored to, that people trust me enough. Yeah. You know, the like, work the work is out there. The work, Martin, even if you even if you go kick a dog down the street, they know they're like that. That dog must have done something. There's a reason <laughs> <laughs> that dog voted for Trump. Now, whatever it is. <laughs> but um, with that being said, how excited you are for a vice president? Oh man, <laughs> Kamala Harris! I actually did a huge post today on social media. I was reflecting on just this idea that this woman of color is you know i'm i'm personally so inspired uh i didn't think i would be which is interesting um when joe biden chose her i was actually disappointed because i was hoping she would chose she, uh, she would he would have chosen elizabeth warren uh, yeah. Because I think she's much more progressive than Kamala. she was out there. I mean, for 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 a person, um, for Lizard Warren to do what she did, um, where conditions at her age and the energy, I'm like, yeah, yeah, she's a little wacky in there, but yo, she's yo, bro, she's going hard. Yeah, she's she's just way more progressive, but I also understand that like our our nation is not ready for progressive, like Bernie Sanders, AOC. You know, bro, but Warren, like we're just not there yet. But I wish we were, you know. But sis, I think, <laughs> motherfucker, like yo, can we get Bernie back running? Yeah, I, 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 that's eighty percent. That's eighty percent of everybody. So how's the twenty percent always deciding what wins? No, no, I'm so sorry. I think it's because we're millennials, right? And okay. we think we everything revolves around us. So I did it again. Fun yeah. fact. <laughs> fun fact. Yeah. Massachusetts is actually the state with the highest amount of millennials. And the reason why I found this out is because you wonder, our target market is millennials between the ages of 25 and 39. So when I was doing this research, I found out that Boston actually holds the highest number of millennials in the country. So think about that. And okay, on so top of that, right? <laughs> like I'm throwing some knowledge at you right no, now. I like that. I'm like, yes, I can feel normal. Right? <laughs> <laughs> on top of that, 84% uh, of millennials say that they tra they want to travel specifically to, to volunteer abroad. So when you think about you wondering like what we're doing and what our target market is, it's perfect. But think about the fact that like the travel industry and the wellness industry do not care about black and brown people, no, just right? Crazy. Like wellness, like everyone knows that black women die from um, childbirth at 50% higher than, I than saw white that women, I know you know? Exactly so when you think about wellness for black and brown people, and, and this is the part that I'm really passionate about, it, that we don't talk about, like, for example, like black men don't talk about wellness, right? Like, it, it's just going to the gym. Go, yeah, going to the gym. Men up, flex, <laughs> do it, you'll feel better after the gym. I swear to God. And it's not real, right? Like that's only, so much right physical what you look like and i'm not saying the gym is bad gym is good do it it's great momentarily <laughs> but there's also that mount mental mental health right there's also the spiritual health right like we're living in a world that is so virtual where we have a new generation that suffers i would say 100 percent of anxiety yeah um because Yo, Wani, you're that. so right. You're so right. Out of here, anxiety, this anxiety that then people around that age, I'm like, oh, this is what's que te la moda. This is what's cool. Let me start writing. I have anxiety too. I'm like, no, you don't have anxiety. This generation really does. Can you stop trying to like, etch I'm sorry. It's part of the millennial. <laughs> it's part of the millennial. Like, we think literally the world revolves around us, yeah. which is fine. That's just who we are. That's how yeah. we were brought up. We were brought up in the technology world where, like, because we had everything at our fingertips, we thought we had, like, power and knowledge, which we did. And we saw everything change. We saw the beeper. We saw we saw the phone. We saw DSL. We you know we, we saw broadband. We saw black president. We you stuffed us with so many life changing things that other generations didn't have. But I'm cooked. <laughs> <laughs> and then you think about the generation Gen Gen Z, the generation coming up behind us. That's my sister's 18. She belongs to that generation. They are so different from us in the in the sense that like they were mostly born around during a war. So around 9-11, um, yes. around that time, right? Then they are experiencing Trump, 
right? Like they're old enough to understand what Trump being in office means, right? Like they were still a little younger, like when Obama was in office, but they experienced the recession. They experienced uh, Trump being in office and now they're experiencing a pandemic. Right. So when you think about like what their outlook on the world is, just it is extremely depressing. Yeah, it just you know? keeps going down. Like we, you know, we went, we were like this. We were up for most of it, and then kind of like down, you know, yeah. during the recession, you know, when everything happened. But the recession affected the generation, um, the boomers, and all because all of their assets and all that. We didn't yeah. really have assets to. We gonna be broke basically for the rest of our lives because we're millennials, but yeah, you're but up. we have experiences, right? Because yeah, we, we travel pushing. and we, we, you know, we're coming up, we're entrepreneurs, or you know. Yo, you got me to party. Yo, I, yo, my people hate politics. So they're gonna hate. People have this like mis pre misconceived notion of what politics is, right? Politics is dirty. People don't. Oh, uh, I, I don't. I don't comment on politics. No, I don't talk about That's politics, what... right? I've. I consider myself an activist. I consider myself um, someone who, a community organizer, someone who really cares about like, the world, right? Um, with that being said, people commend that, right? But make a villain of people who have those same intentions but are in politics. You get, you get where, I'm, where I'm coming from? So my thing with politics is that, I, and, I'm, and this is another reason why I'm happy that folks that don't fuck with politics went out and voted this time. Yeah. And I think it's because they realize that politics is not just politics. It's not something that those people over there get to talk about. Politics is our livelihood, right? Like they're, questions they're matter deciding a lot. what happens with our education system, what happens with our healthcare system, what happens to the programs that are in place for kids that have IEPs, for people that are poor, for people who are homeless. It, it's so much more. The justice, the Department of Justice, like it's so much more than just oh, I don't like politics because you know they're just all stealers or they're just in power or they're just power hungry, you know. We have to change the narrative. And, and I say this because as Latinos, we have a lot of power. We have a lot of buying power. We have voter power. We are the biggest demographic. Like come come 2050, we're gonna be the majority. And we're being told, that, I mean, we believe that voting doesn't do anything. But so, I think it's turning. I, and, and that's what I'm, now that's what I'm talking about because as a woman, as a Latina, as you know, Afro Latina, right? I, I'm starting a business, right? Like the pandemic happened, I lost my job. I was like, damn, what am yeah, I gonna do? Either. It's all good. It happens. They laid off eleven thousand employees. Like I was working for a huge global company, and and it happens, and that's fine. But now I'm starting my own business, right? Because. But I will tell you this, from year, the year 2014 to the year 2018, Latinas, female Latinas, they started 2.3 million firms in the U.S. God, that's you. That's 18% of all female biz women-owned businesses that, that were built in, that, in, in those years. Which me, and, and even though, even though we only did that 18%, we're still paid 54 cents to every white male dollar. So when you're talking about, oh, politics don't matter, oh, I don't go, I don't get involved in that, you're telling your mom, your sister, your best friend, your girlfriend, if she's a Latina, that you don't give a fuck about her and that you're not gonna fight for her to make the same amount of money as a white man and that you're not gonna support her business when she does decide to start it. So when we decide not to vote, when we decide not to be involved in what happens in our communities, we're letting other people make those decisions for us. And I think that's where that whole rhetoric of not getting involved into politics turns me off and why I like to challenge it. Because yeah. in my mind is like, I right, cool, you don't wanna be in politics and you don't wanna talk about those things, but it's impact. It's impacting me, you know. Like we're at the bottom. We're making less than any other demographic across the across the board. So when you're investing one dollar in a Latina-owned business, your dollar is going twice as far as the dollar that you spent on your Yeezys, the dollar that you spent at, you know, Domino's or by a white man. You know, like think about where you put in that dollar. 
and think about the impact it's making. So fine, you don't care about politics, but every dollar you spend is, is politics. And that's what we learned through the Black Lives Matter movement. That's what we learned through this pandemic. Everything is connected to the laws that are literally telling us how we're able to live. So when I hear people say, oh, I don't do politics, wait, the what I'm hearing is, you don't give a fuck enough about the people around you to care about politics because it's too hard to do that. I can't argue with that. I've be, I been on Twitter like <laughs> ration mofos and they're like, oh, but everyone has a, you know their own opinion. And I'm like, Shit. Well, <laughs> folks can have their opinion, but I'm also, I don't need to associate with you. Yeah. And you at know? the same time, these things are really affecting us. And the reason why I'm like that passionate. When you passionate. have your kids, when you start your family, when you, like, it's all connected. It's all connected. And I feel, and I, I, and I can only imagine, like, you know when you just figure something out and you just woke up, you're trying to let everybody know, nobody believes you, nobody's thinking. That's what that, that's what politics Wait. is. <laughs> so I swear to God, until they, like, until they learn, they're like, oh, oh my God, I haven't voted in eight years. Oh my, I haven't done this. So, you know what's interesting? Uh, you know, a friend of mine is running for mayor, Ana Victoria Morales. She's she's running Ooh, for mayor of Lawrence. Name, she's one of mine. <laughs> no, me or no, so she's running for Lawrence, um, for mayor of Lawrence, and you know, our the only way she's gonna win is if we get unregistered voters that are young to vote, right? So eighteen to thirty-five year olds that are not registered to vote—that's the only way we're gonna win. And and one thing that I realized is that the more we talk to people, like we're going into you know Copolan, we're going into Cla Clas, like you know, beauty uh, studio, like we're talking to our people, right? Like the people we went to high school with and we, and, we're st and I'm starting to see like, people don't care about things until it affects them, right? So, los juqueros, que estaban haciendo todo su, todo su dinero con la juca. Then once the laws came down, yo, yo, yo. It came back, it came down to politics. They didn't have the infrastructure to organize against the people lobbying against hookah. Because they would sleep on that politics situation. Exactly. Politics affects the day. Yo, politics is, is power. It is powerful. And, 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 that's what I mean. So when we're talking about the fact that there's no dispensaries in Lawrence, but our <laughs> our people are being locked up because because they're still selling weed or they're this or they're that or that the fact that there's even dispensaries open with white people in it is disgusting like no white man or woman should be opening no dispensary Imagine motherfuckers arresting me and shit so like you guys don't like it let me fucking put it legally somewhere it's the it's the same thing right but if we don't organize as a community if we don't understand how these things impact us we can't we can't affect change we can't mm -hmm. impact for, for things to lean in our direction, right? So so when Trump came into office, yeah, he was the first celebrity in chief, cool. But it was a, the first time for a lot of people that they realized they weren't safe. Immigrants being, like ICE could break down any door in Lawrence and ain't nobody gonna stop them. I, I, and, Think and, about and, that. And let's say, I didn't know that. A lot of people don't know that. Let's say if I don't know that and I'm a man thinking somebody's robbing my house and I can defend myself, how does that situation look like in the news? Hey, man, there's something we found. Oh, we found out that it's bad. He had a bag of weed. Yeah, let's do this drug bust. Let's do this drug bust. Get the other guys inside. And you think we don't know about that? My thing is we cannot sit around and expect other people to create laws and businesses and spaces that represent who we are yeah. right that's why i'm moving forward with you wander that's why i decided to literally not interview for no other company because i'm like what is the point of me going to get another job and work in another place that don't see me that don't understand me that belittles my intelligence and who i am as a human now i'm gonna create my own shit I'm gonna employ my own people shit, and man. I'm gonna make sure this shit is successful. And to do that, I need my community. I need my people because we all we got. Yeah. We all we got. <laughs> Ain't nobody else give a fuck about us. Yeah. And that's real. Yeah. That's real talk. You wander aside, 
you know my bullshit aside yeah. no one gives a fuck about us except for us if we don't got each other's back ain't nobody gonna do that shit for us with that being said you know check out you want that you, you know, i don't think <laughs> we could end out a most powerful no one I mean, that was so powerful like i'm a harris fan yeah, dude, right? <laughs> yeah I, I was eating i'm like yo yo yo, yo. Like, yo i'm like you said all this and I just remembered at the same time back to the point that you have a whole family. It's like you're in a castle, you're queen and shit. You know, it's like I'm th yo, I'm like mad, like imagery, like like yo, that is some boss shit. I respect everything you do. And uh Wani, thank you for coming. I'm I'm, I'm I'm honored you actually opened up some light bulbs in this in this little broken down head of mine. And uh with that being said, you have any any shout outs or anything? I just want to make sure that everyone goes and checks out You Wander at www.youwanderinc.com. There is all of our services, everything that we do. We're also on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, again, at You Wander Inc. You across wander. all platforms. I want to say thank you to my family, to all of the people that helped me create this, and I hope that you all are SVP for our business shower on Thursday. It's going to be amazing. And the last thing is, we are raffling some amazing stuff. Right. So we're giving away two therapeutic art pieces that were handmade by an artist in Boston. We're also raffling a yoga, a sculpting yoga class for 20 people. It's that's virtual. Old, yeah, and we're we're raffling off two JetBlue travel certificates up to $600 for any round trip flight that you want. Sheesh. So the raffle tickets, Venmo at Wani dot slash Munoz, $100, and you get put into the raffle. And we're gonna announce them at the event on Thursday. If you're not there, you still get to win. So send me your $100 and get that Facts. Get that raffle yo, prize. That's so flip. That's so flip. Why? <laughs> thank you, yo. Let's go. Thank we you for having me. <laughs> I know you. I don't know that shit. <laughs>